self-portraits. We have spent a lot of time and effort making a beautiful self-portrait drawing. Now we're ready to paint. So, in order to paint, you absolutely have to have your shapes drawn, as you see, following the grid, onto here. Not what you know is there, but what you see. So I want you to notice right here, you do not see these two black lines coming in, and he did not draw them right there, so good job. Okay, so first step is you can erase out your lines, and then, and don't erase out your drawing, but erase out the grid lines, and then paint over that. That might make it, that will make it a little bit easier. If you're going to paint the background black, then that'll paint over just fine. It's the white that you want to be a little bit more careful with. But it's not absolutely necessary. It may take you more coats of paint to cover up those lines. So if you're going to erase your lines, you want to do that first. Okay, so now we need paint. And you have your paints are lined up over here. And you have a number that correlates with your name. You're going to use the same paints, your paints, every day. Same paints. The way you take those out, just, you just do that, take them out. But the way to take, put them back in, I need you to put them upside down. Make sure your lid is closed. Make sure that you haven't mixed any colors. Set that on top. Put your hand there. Voila. My hand's too big to fit in there. Most of your hands are going to be too big to fit in there. So make sure that you put your lids on tight. Make sure that you put these right side up. All right, so we're going to need paint. We're going to need water. You go to the sink one time to fill up your gallon of water, and the rest of the time you're going to use your cubby. So your cup should be in the top. Your cups are in the top. Get yourself some water. Only one person from the table may go at the beginning of class to the sink. You do not wash your hands at the sink. You wash your hands at your table sink. So I need water. Then I need paint brushes. Your paint brushes are color coded for your table. I need you to try to make sure that these handles stay clean, so rinse those off too, so that we can tell which belongs to whom. Notice that there is not an empty space. You may not have an empty space when you turn these back in. So these are the regular uh, paint brushes, and then each table is going to get four of these small paint brushes. So you want these to your table. Okay, so when you're using these small paint brushes, you cannot leave paint in them, especially the teeny tiny ones. This acrylic paint is basically a liquid plastic. If you leave paint in a brush, you ruin the brush and you will have to replace the brush. So make sure you get those cleaned out. Okay. Small brushes for your smaller areas. This, I would not use this, obviously, in an area like that. I wouldn't even bother using an area like this. That's like for areas like this. And I probably would not try to do an edge with that. If you're really careful, maybe. You gotta be really careful. It's a pretty, pretty big brush. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of different styles of brushes. This one is a flat, stiff brush. This is my favorite kind of brush. I prefer a round brush. Other artists, prefer, you're going to prefer, well, you're going to have your own preference. So I like the round brushes, and I get them wet like this. And then when you store them, make sure you put them right side up. Okay, when you are starting to paint, let's see, this area, ooh, what should I do? I'm going to do a smallish area. I'm going to do this area right in here. And I'm going to first decide what color paint. So. What shade of paint do I want to use here? I'm going to take my paintbrush, and I need to have some paper towel handy. Paper towel are in the bottom of your cubby here. I have a paper towel handy. I'm going to take a little dab of paint, and I'm going to just doop right there. All right, that's pretty obviously not the right shade, because I can see it. It's not blending in at all. So that one is not right. I'm going to wipe that off. Nope, that's too light. Oh, also you want to make sure that you shake your jars. If you ever open up acrylic paint and there's a thin layer of, cr of clear liquid over the top, that's actually the plastic part and it, it needs to mix with the pigment in order for it to, to work right. 
to flow nicely and things. All right, so that one's too dark. I'm gonna try this one. See if this one blends. Actually, I said dark. That one's too light. I'm gonna take that. Boop. That blends in pretty well. Now, if you get a shade that is in between two of your values of paint, you're just gonna have to make a choice which one you want. So I'm gonna wipe that off so I can still see my grid. I've got my small paintbrush. Determine what value I need. And now I'm going to pull my paintbrush. Make sure you're dragging your paintbrush like this. And I still need to refer back to this to see what, what I'm using. So notice that I'm pulling my paintbrush. If I try to push it like this, I don't have any control. So you want to pull that paintbrush, try to get to drag along the edge. If it starts to not make a very smooth line, just put a little bit of water on your brush to thin out the paint a little bit. Just a little bit. Stay inside those lines. If you need to get a smaller paintbrush, I need you to rinse that out first. Squeeze it with your tissue or your paper towel. If you see any color, it is not clean. Now, during class, you can lay that down. At the end of class, you need to rinse that out. So I feel like I kind of need a little smaller brush there. So I'm going to get a smaller brush. When you're using a paintbrush, this metal piece right here, do not bring the paint all the way up to that metal piece right there. It should be just on the bristle. It'll preserve the brush better. When you get it in this area right here, that's when it starts making those bristles like fan out like that instead of having a nice smooth surface like that. All right. Oh, so. Jose, I totally just messed up on yours because I didn't, there wasn't a line right there. So, luckily for you, I just totally made a mistake. Oh, you are so lucky that I messed up because now you got to figure out what to do. All right, so now I need a pencil. And when you erase off, leave a little bit of the edge just in case of these grid marks, top and bottom, just in case. You make a total mistake and you got to match those lines up. I didn't make that big a mistake yet. But I could. It's entirely possible. I make mistakes. It happens. All right, so the mistake I made here is because there wasn't a line right here closing in that shape. And it's, it's totally easy to do. It's not a big deal. I can fix it. So I'm going to draw that line back in there. And then I'm going to come back with my white and clean that up. There's a lot of shapes and lines in these portraits. It's entirely possible a very experienced artist could miss a line or two. It's not a big deal. You make a mistake, you fix it, you move on, da-da. All right. And I also notice here, like, this shape here, you're going to really, Jose's going to really want to look at the depth of that shape. Like, it's wider than the actual line he has. So you need to make sure that you're really paying close attention to your original. Okay, so you want to make sure that you keep those lines crisp. Use the paint, use this laminated copy to match your value scale. Have a paper towel so that you can clean it off, clean it off the tip of the brush. I use the back of the brush to dab it in. Make sure you clean that off. Okay, now cleaning brushes. To clean your brushes, first of all, you want to make sure that this is it has all the paint out of it. I'm going to get a clean one because that's pretty full of paint. I'm going to make sure that it has all the paint out of it. Did not use that one. I'll put it back. Any paintbrush that you used, leave it out. Don't put it back in here. If you used a paintbrush, do not put it back in here because then you have to clean all these brushes because nobody knows which brush you used. All right, I did not use these. I'm going to put those back. And take these to be cleaned. I've already got what I think is all the paint out of there. So now I'm going to come over here. Oh, I forgot something too. Forgot to tell you that paint shirts are in the top drawer. Your paint shirts. This is a group. This is a shared studio. You need to be responsible and respectful of the next class. So these paint shirts need to be rolled up in here. You do not have to wear a paint shirt unless you particularly like your clothes. If you like your clothes, I would totally recommend that you cover them up. 
Acrylic paint will not come out of your clothes. It might, but you should assume that it will not. And that the reason we're using acrylic paint on our paintings is because if we make a mistake, all we have to do is wait for it to dry and we can cover it right up. Paint that's easily washable is not, doesn't do that. Okay, so here, do not wash your hands until you've cleaned up everything else. First thing you need to do is get these paintbrushes turned in because there's going to be someone up here monitoring the paintbrushes and checking for cleanliness to make sure they're all clean. And if you have a dirty paintbrush, they're sending you back. If you wait till the last minute of class, I'm not writing you a pass for that. Okay, this is a paintbrush cleaner. And each table has their own paintbrush cleaner. Now, I noticed that my first hour today made some lines in here. That's not cool. Do not dig those paintbrushes in. Do not break the surface of this cake. So this cake of paintbrush cleaner, it should last our class, this yellow table, oh, five, ten years. If this is your own personal cake, then this would last you a lifetime. So do not rough that surface. And that could be a little bit tricky with these smaller paintbrushes. You just need a light, very light, very light. And then rinse that out again. Squeeze it to make sure that you don't have any paint in there. Okay. This lives in this top drawer with the paint shirts. Remember, this top drawer should have your cups for painting. Do not leave those in the sink. They do not live in the sink. They live here. Here's your soap. Your cleaning sponges, they live on top. <laughs> OK, the lid is missing here. They live on top of the lid. Do not put them anywhere else. All right. So today you're going to paint. Start painting. Make sure that you use the end of your paintbrush. You could use a pencil, too, if you want to like dab it to find the color. Make sure you rinse your brush as well. When you are ready to take it to the drying rack, you need to make sure that you do not lay it on anyone else's piece. So first hour, start at the bottom here. This tab right here, this is the start of the next eighth grade class here, you need to start at the bottom of where they, where that tab is and put your piece in, check, make sure that no one else's piece is there. How angry are you going to be when someone shoves their piece in on top of your wet paint? Oh, so angry. Oh, so, so angry. So make sure that you are putting it on the next available rung. So if we're putting it here. These two spaces are filled here. This should be down here. You're going to do side by side, two by two. So the next available rung is right there. 